Exodus, the third chapter, I want to read in your hearing verses 13 and 14. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt you say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. I came tonight to declare, not only is that powerful, but that's good news. We serve a God that is self-existent. We serve a God that cannot be fathomed by, you know, our minds. We can't think of a word, you know, that sums him up. Uh, but we serve a God uh, that exists all by himself. We serve a God that is sovereign. We serve a God that was going to not only send this message to the children of Israel, but he was going to demonstrate to them who he was. And when you read the book of Exodus, you will see how God moved on their behalf to deliver his people from the hands of Pharaoh. We see how God, if you read the book of Exodus, sent plagues. We see how God, even in the end, when Pharaoh had hardened his heart, where God slew the firstborn of every Egyptian. But the children of Israel put the blood over the doorposts. Hallelujah. And when that death came through the land, it passed over God's people. And God was going to even furthermore demonstrate to his people so that they can come to know him all over again. When he led them in the wilderness, he led them with a cloud by day. He led them, hallelujah, with a pillar of fire by night. He opened up the Red Sea, hallelujah, and allowed his children to pass on dry land. History, hallelujah, testifies of his greatness. History testifies that he is sovereign. History testifies that there is none like our God. And I came tonight again to declare to you, that's good news. never want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. 
I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.